All right, we're back with another WandaVision review here today, Season 1, Episode 4. We interrupt this program, that's the title of this episode, and definitely a much more revealing episode than anything else we've seen up to this point. And all the talk about how the first three episodes are one act, and 4, 5, and 6 will be in another act entirely, that kind of came to fruition with this episode. We didn't really move this story forward, we didn't get any progression on the WandaVision side of things uh, from where we ended on the last episode, but we found out a lot about what was going on behind the scenes, so to speak, from the first three episodes. So this was really, really good. We got a lot to talk about, guys. As always, being joined. I'll switch it up. I'll introduce Phil first. Phil Lindsay, welcome back to the show, my man. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Doing great. I, I figured in WandaVision fashion, we'll kind of uh, throw people for a loop, introduce Phil first. And then we got the doc, Chris Mueller. Chris, welcome back, my man. How are you? I'm doing great. I was happy to talk WandaVision. So... As soon as I wrapped up this episode, now I've gotten into the mode of like, now I got to talk about it. That's why I'm excited to talk about this stuff as soon as it's released on Fridays with you guys. Because I know, Chris, like when we review like Mandalorian, usually we would do it like the next day or a couple days later. With Va WandaVision, there's so much stuff going on that it's hard to wait a couple days because either I forget or there is just, I don't know, I, I just won't feel... Um, and I, I won't be as into the swing of things as I was as soon after I saw it. So I'm really glad we're talking about this today, um, even though it's going up in a couple of days. But Phil, I'll start with you. What were your initial impressions of this episode and how it was so drastically different than anything else we've seen up to this point in the show? Yeah, this was a dark episode compared to <laughs> yeah. the first three episodes. It was a very dark episode. I mean, starting with... Um, uh, well, Monica coming back from the blip and we haven't seen like real people come back from the blip. So mm -hmm. it was jarring from the very beginning and just seeing just how chaotic it was and how scared people were and just what a sad situation for Monica to come back to. Yeah. I mean the first five minutes, I don't even know if it was five minutes, maybe even just three minutes of this episode alone. Like obviously they explain all the things going on going on with Wanda and Vision and whatever and the Westview stuff. We finally got a lot of explanation on that front. But the first three minutes of this episode alone were crazy. Because like you said, we haven't really seen people come back from the blip aside from the first few minutes of Far From Home. And I know we went into great detail about this. Uh, Chris, when we reviewed that movie a while ago, in terms of how this would work and issues that it would present and stuff like that. So she comes back in the hospital. We found out that her mom, obviously uh, Maria Rambo from the first Captain Marvel movie from two years ago, passed away not well, not while she was in the hospital or while she was in the hospital, but while uh, Maria or rather Monica was gone. So it's a whole weird thing. People are blipping back while she's walking through the hallway just a really scary situation. Like, this really throws you for a loop right off the bat. So, Chris, what were your thoughts on the opening alone for this episode? Yeah, the opening was... It, it gripped you right away. Like, watching all that chaos in the hospital and everybody freaking out. and Yeah, it, it was definitely an interesting way to start things off. Because I don't think anybody really expected them to even go into that. But uh, it it was a little sad to know that we're not going to get to see her mom in the show at all in any capacity at some point. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, this is Marvel, obviously they can say somebody's dead and maybe they're not dead. Who knows? But it, it feels like that was them writing Lashana Lynch's character out, which was too bad because she was one of the better, she was one of the best things about Captain Marvel, the movie. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that, that made me sad, but again, you know, it is what it is. And, they would have had to age her character up 30 years or so anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's probably better that we're focusing on Monica now and Maria is just maybe we'll get to see her in flashbacks in the next Captain Marvel or something. I don't know. Yeah. Well, that's what I was thinking too. Maybe not even in the, maybe not even Captain Marvel too. They might even do that in this show if they wanted to, uh, maybe for just a quick cameo and a flashback or whatever. And I don't know. Hey, maybe if Wanda could bring back vision, then maybe, you know, she can bring back, uh, Maria Rambo in some form or fashion, even though they have no real connection aside from their interaction um, in Westview so far, but we'll see. But yeah, the first five minutes alone were definitely gripping, like you guys said, and answers a lot of questions. Her mom dies from cancer. We get the introduction of S.W.O.R.D. In the MCU, I know you guys kind of know what it is, and I've been, you know, gotten familiar with it, with what you guys have said about it and what I've heard about it. Do you think they could have done a better job? Uh, Chris, I'll start with you in terms of describing exactly what sword is because obviously it's like a 
a lot like S.H.I.E.L.D. in the MCU, and that's exactly what it is. It's kind of like the new S.H.I.E.L.D. Do you think they could have done a better job of explaining what it is, or did I just miss something here? I mean, I think... I think we got a good enough gist that, you know, they're just another one of those big government organizations that deals with secret stuff that the public doesn't really know about. Mm -hmm. Finding finding out that it was, like, founded by uh, Maria's character was kind of cool. Yeah. What about you, Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Chris. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, the character that was in charge uh it was jason hayward or something like that i don't think he's from the comics and that actor i swear to god he only ever plays villains so oh, really? <laughs> so i'm wondering <laughs> if there's more to that guy than we know yeah i was gonna ask you guys if that was anyone significant because they mentioned the name multiple times we see him a lot on this show on this episode alone um so there's no significance or no relation to the comics whatsoever as far as that guy's concerned i couldn't find any when i when I googled his name and I read like two little things that were pointing out Easter eggs in the show and, and he wasn't brought up at all. So oh. if he's anything related to anything from the comics, it's so obscure that <laughs> most people haven't caught on to it yet. <laughs> and most, most Marvel fans catch on to a lot of things. So I would assume that there is relation. Like you said, they would have been brought up by now. Um, do you think he'll play a bigger role in the show? Cause they mentioned multiple times. Um, Darcy does among Jimmy Woo and other people that this guy is just a complete dick. Do you think that he'll play a bigger role that he could execute in wrestling terms a heel turn at some point, or is his role just kind of what it is? Yeah, I mean, he could just be the the government suit that's there to oversee things, and he might not even be an important character in the grand scheme of the show. He mm-hmm. might just be he might just be there to give some semblance that somebody's in charge, but it doesn't necessarily matter that he's there. Yeah. Yeah, I guess and we'll they see. Didn't do was... a ton, they didn't do a ton with him in this episode. You know, he was just sort of there to give Monica the rundown on what's been going on since she's been gone and yeah. lets her know that she's grounded and then sends her out there to meet with Wu. So, yeah. Yeah. It'll be interesting. Yeah, no, definitely. What about you, Phil? What were your thoughts on the introduction of Sword as well as the uh, Hayward character? Uh, yeah, I'm not familiar with the Hayward character. Uh, of course, when you think Sword, you immediately think Agent Bran. Like, Bran is the most popular Sword character. She's like the Nick Fury, so to speak, of uh, Sword. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, no, I wasn't really sure, like, going into it exactly what it was going to entail. And again, I know you guys have explained it to me before. I just wasn't exactly sure um, how they were going to go about describing it. But like you said, Chris, I think they... Uh, kind of established it was a lot like S.H.I.E.L.D. and that it's kind of like the new government agency type thing. So they really threw a lot at you in these first 10, 15 minutes in terms of uh, Monica's backstory, um, what S.W.O.R.D. is, Jimmy Woo's character, who we haven't seen since Ant-Man of the Wasp a few years ago, Darcy Lewis, which would mark her first appearance in the MCU, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, since Thor 2, right? And that was like 10 years ago in terms of when the movie came out. I think it is. Um, but they threw so many cool references to these characters when they reintroduced them. Like, I don't know if you guys caught it when when Monica is, is coming back from the blip, you can hear Bree, Bree's voice saying, um, Lieutenant Troublemaker. Yep. Um, oh, I did not and, catch that. Wow. Um, when, um, when Agent Wu shows up, he does the magic trick that he's practicing. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah and man, it was. I didn't catch that yeah. either. That's cool. Yeah, it seemed like there were a lot of Easter eggs on this episode. I really like Jimmy Woo's character a lot in Ant Man and the Wasp, and I'm really glad that not only is he back, but like in a prominent role. Maybe it was just for this episode, but he was in this episode a lot. Um, and I already really enjoy the chemistry that he has with Darcy. I think that's a great pairing. I think Monica's role on the show was great too. Before she got sucked into like. The, this Westview town or whatever. So can you guys explain exactly what was going on when the cops said, we have no recollection of this town whatsoever, but Jimmy and Monica do. And then there's the sign there. So if the cops don't think that the town exists, then why is there a sign there? And obviously we find out later, like soon after, um, that the town just mysteriously disappeared. It's a missing town case, blah, blah, blah. What's the whole situation with the cops and why they don't know what it is? And despite the fact there's a giant sign there saying that there is a town called Westview. The, well, they sort of asked that question in the episode where Monica was like, you know, 
why do we have awareness of Westview, but they don't? Maybe it's because of proximity or having no personal connection to the town. So I'm not sure if that's what they'll end up going with, but it seems like a a good conclusion to jump to, just that they were so far away that none of that delusion that Wanda's broadcasting to everybody is part of their lives. So who knows? I mean, the sign might even just be Wanda's creation for all we know. I mean, I know it looks like a modern day regular thing, but mm. for all we know, like those, the little town we're looking at down the road, like Wanda could have created all that from nothing. Yeah. Well, I we obviously, think it'll be, I do think it'll be a real town and I think, yeah. cause they've already started tracking down who some of the residents of the town are. That was cool. Which is also interesting because I don't know if you noticed Agnes's profile did not have a driver's license or a full name on it. Hmm. That's interesting. Did they just did but, they even know who she was, and there was just no driver's license, or was it like a, we don't know who this person is? I I think it's the show sort of hiding who she could potentially really be. Mm-hmm. So there was like there was a lot of speculation that uh, Herb's character was going to be another character in Marvel called the High Evolutionary. Yeah, and I think the fact that they gave his character a name that's not anything related to anything we've seen is a good sign that he's probably not anything important, but I do think Agnes's character now, uh, people are still speculating the whole Agatha Harkness thing, and that could be which way they end up going, but um, I did just find it interesting that they had no last name for her or a driver's license like they did for the mom from that 70s show and her husband or uh, Vision's co-worker Norm. Mm Mm-hmm who they revealed his name and I looked it up and and I didn't like, I looked up all those names and none of them were related to the comics. Okay. So they're, they're unimportant people or just brand new creations for the show. Yeah, no, that's definitely something significant then because they don't do things by accident. So that's going to be something to watch for going forward. Uh, did watching this episode for you, Phil, kind of confirm the theory that you've been giving us the last couple of episodes about how Wanda is completely in control of this whole thing and how she, I mean, I know we discussed the possibility of there being another big bad in the episode or in the show itself. Uh, but this, did this kind of confirm what you were already thinking in terms of Wanda being in control and this just kind of being her playground? Yeah. I mean, when I, when I said a few episodes back, I think I said, you know, she just pushed Monica out of the, out of the town. And I, we don't, get the inclination at least that Wanda would hurt anyone uh this episode kind of proved me wrong in that instance like (laughs) she is definitely willing to hurt someone (laughs) to keep this this fantasy and I am definite in definite belief now that this confirms that she is controlling everything um I think it's very telling um like Chris said that they did not um they didn't they didn't flip over a card on who Agnes is. Um, they also didn't let us know who Dot was. And the other she guy... She was That's what threw me. Yeah, she they didn't. Yes, yeah, she might be, like, somebody from somewhere else. And that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, they don't tell us who Dottie is, and they don't tell us who the other... Her husband is, who Vision called a communist. Yeah. He's also not on the board. Um, and I uh, thought no, that was interesting. No, he was. Norm, he was. I thought the other guy that worked there was on the board, not the guy with the mustache. The guy with the mustache that got fired is the guy that he called a communist. Oh, wait, yeah, I'm confusing. Okay, so the dude who played Dottie's husband wasn't on the board? Right, the dude that plays Dottie's husband is the guy with the mustache. Okay, okay. Um, Actually, I'm drawing a blank on his name at the moment, but remember in the first episode, he was leaving with with the box of his stuff because the boss had fired him. And then in the second episode, he's at that meeting, yeah. and he called him a communist. Interesting. Okay. Um, so I, I definitely think there's some fire to the um, uh, Agatha Hartwell stuff, because every time we see Agnes show up, she's trying to help Wanda with something, and she's kind of trying to help her um, keep the illusion in the episode, because... Uh, If you notice, like, she pointed out the vision that Monica was not from there. And Mm -hmm. then when the other neighbor, who we know has a real name, too, was like, well, we're... She was like, no, 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 you can't do that. 
And so I think she is in some way helping her. And that would go into the belief that is um, Agatha Harkness because Agatha mentored Wanda in the comics. Oh. Yeah, I actually had a theory developing about this. So I'm wondering if Wanda meets Agatha and Agatha's like, well, I can help you get past your grief. And they like, and this is kind of them doing this together. But it feels like Wanda still has more control over everything than Agnes. But again, that's just early thoughts. But yeah, I do think that she's going to end up playing a much bigger role in the show going forward just because even sword doesn't know who she is so yeah and i think like the only the only thing that would make me question that theory is it doesn't seem like wanda knew who she was in the first episode because she introduced herself to her yeah true i i'm not sure but i i definitely think that she's attempting to help wanda in some way i don't know why though what threw me for a loop is how shocked Wanda looked after she threw Monica out of the town. Like, it almost looked like she was surprised that she did that and a little horrified at yeah. that. Yeah. Do you think she was so horrified wondering- at how powerful she actually was? More powerful than she thought she actually could be or something along those lines? Maybe more that she was like, felt a little murderous rage for a second. I mm-hmm. think that scared her in some way. Yeah, I got the same feeling. I got the feeling that it was in the moment, like, you're not taking this from me. Get out of this town. Yeah. And then after she did it, it was like, oh, I really did that. But at the same time, she was like, I have to do this because no one's going to take this from me. Do you think yeah. – or go ahead, Chris. I was just going to say, yeah, it's 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 a real goofy show, but I love it. <laughs> oh, no, absolutely. Yeah, There's a lot of things to like about the show. And they said, too, kind of going off what you guys were saying – Darcy had mentioned something about the show being censored, which it obviously was because they would cut out the parts where like the tension was teased and then it would cut out like right to the end. It would just skip to the ending of the episode uh, of the WandaVision, whatever, of the WandaVision sitcom. Do you think the censoring is coming from Wanda herself or is there someone else pulling the strings? Yeah, I mean, it certainly looks like it's Wanda because like when the agent comes through, comes out of the manhole and they don't see what happens after that. Yeah. Like Wanda clearly did something to the agent at that point and it just doesn't show it. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you guys. What Do you have any speculation as to what could have happened to him? Because we found out what happened to Monica. She came back. We don't see the beekeeper guy again. Is he is he dead? What do you guys think happened to him? I have no idea. <laughs> I doubt he's dead. I don't think she. I don't think she's killing anyone yet. Okay. Uh, but I, I, I think she probably just either she got th- threw him out of the town too, and they just haven't found him, or, uh, or he's still in the town somewhere, and he has no memory of what happened. Yeah, maybe. Well, I feel like if he got thrown out of the town. Then, like Monica, because like the red light went off, they were alerted when someone else was kicked out of the uh, the Westview town. Wouldn't they have known if if you know he was back on Earth or whatever? Yeah, that's true. So yeah. maybe I don't know. Maybe you you guys are probably right though. I don't know if she would have killed him. I'm not sure if she has that in her. But that was never referenced again. So like we sh- we saw the behind the scenes of Monica getting kicked out, whereas we didn't you know on the third episode last week, but. We, we don't find out anything about the beekeeper guy at all. We find out, like, Jimmy Woo was behind the intercom, which we already speculated, but we find out how that kind of came to be and all this other stuff. But one thing I thought was funny about the episode is that they're kind of asking Jimmy and Darcy, they're asking all the questions that we were already asking, and not just us, <laughs> but, like, everybody. Yeah. Like, why sitcoms? What's with the hexagons? Is that, like, a genuine, like, that stuff is actually going to leak? I mean, the sitcoms thing is, I think, going to be explained at some point. Do you think they would be so meta as to mention the hexagon thing that it will lead somewhere? What do you think was up with that? Or do you think they're just making fun of people speculating as to what this stuff could mean and that we're just looking too much into it? Well, one thing is they showed a map of the town and it looked like the perimeter Wanda created was a hexagon on that map. Okay. So it's not just like a dome. It's shaped. But also, if I'm not mistaken... Darcy specifically asks for an old CRT TV. And I believe that when those broadcast, it's technically in a hexagonal pattern that's like pieced together. Mm -hmm. 
so and also whenever you see like something touch the little barrier going in and out of the thing you kind of see little flashes of red green and blue which are the original three colors that all things were technically broadcast in under those old televisions oh interesting so it seems like they're tying in a lot of stuff to just the TV technology for some reason. And I think that'll probably keep advancing over time because they were showing people wheeling in like different versions of televisions that Darcy could try. So yeah, it's almost like she has to use a new technology every time Wanda switches up what she's doing. I'm not sure if that's significant in any way. I just noticed that there was a lot of references to like old television technology. Yeah. No, they said that multiple times about how, you know, she even referenced the fact, why is it going from one decade to the other? It's ruining her enjoyment of the show, which I thought was funny. Um, <laughs> she had said something else along those lines about how, like they were, like they were watching the show, she and Jimmy, like they were actually viewing it about like, oh, look, they're having a baby, blah, blah, blah. Oh, and the other thing was that she was like, am I crazy? Or like Vision actually died, right? Like, so they mentioned that again, just to remind us, okay he's not real or not, not this version anyway, cause he is dead. And another thing I wanted to reference to you guys or bring that up is that at the very end, when they show what happened in between Monica being booted from the episode or, or Westview. And then at the very end, when they're sitting down on the couch with their kids, she looks at vision and she sees dead vision. Um, the lifeless vision with the mind stone taken out of his head. What was going on with that? Was that just her reality messing with whatever universe this is? What was going on with that? Uh, go ahead, Phil, because I don't know. <laughs> I wasn't sure what to make of that, but I'm pretty sure that confirms the Vision's dead. Yeah, it has like, to. Yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure he's dead, and this all just shows that she is trying to hold on to the memory of him. Um, th- th- there was another part with that when she sat down and Vision kind of looked at her, and like this is our first again glimpse after second after the third episode that Vision has no idea what's going on, or at least this, you know, Vision in this um, alternate reality has no idea what's going on. And he was looking around like, what is going on? And he almost looked afraid. Like, what is she doing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, apparently there was a scene that they shot for Endgame that they ended up cutting where they showed Vision, uh, where they showed his body being retrieved by Wanda. So I'm wondering if she's like literally reanimating his dead like metallic body in some way. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I, mean, I was maybe that too. maybe they cut that scene so they can put it in the show at some point. I mean that that's always a possibility as well. If Yeah, that's true. So now that we kind of assume that Wanda is control of the whole narrative here, then what was with the stuff with Hydra? Is that because she kind of was brought up by Hydra and that's why assuming this is all of her creation and she was in charge of like the Hydra watch and all the toaster and all that other shit. Is that just because of her roots with Hydra or is that again, another, is that another force or something? The commercials almost seem to happen like right after something happens that shakes Wanda's world a little bit. Okay. So, like, the Strucker commercial happened right after the exchange with Dottie. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember what it was for the other two, but I know that those commercials came right after something that seemed strange happening in the show. Mm -hmm. So I get the feeling that those commercials are almost like Wanda's taking a minute to sort of reset herself and her powers, maybe, and the commercial is like, what Darcy was sort of saying, like she's censoring certain things so we don't see it. Maybe the commercials are her way of doing that, of her taking a minute to kind of relax and regain herself. And then, you know, like in the last episode, she does that for a split second and then vision walks through the door and she seems fine again. But yeah, yeah, it seemed like the commercials are there for a very specific reason, whether or not the content of the commercials has anything more to do with her just taking memories from her childhood and, putting them into the commercials like the hydra mentioned the stark mentioned all that it, it may be more significant than that but it could also be that you know she's just looking for anything in her head and those names are the most prominent because they had such an impact on her life yeah that just it was the one thing about the first three episodes while we were watching the episodes in real time that was not acknowledged in this episode it felt like they explained everything including the 
sword helicopter that went through and entered Westview when it was still red. It's because it wasn't from that world. It was from outside of that world. That seemed to be explained. Um, so they didn't really explain the commercials, and obviously there's a reason why, and we'll you know get we'll find out eventually. But they also didn't explain why when Dottie had cut her hand with the glass and they showed the blood, it was red. Whereas everything else, and I think it was in that it was I think in the second episode. I don't remember if it was first or second. Um, but they showed the red blood, but everything else was still black and white. Now we know why the helicopter was in color. We don't know why the red blood was shown though. Um, so do you have any other insight on that, uh, Phil, uh, including on the commercials and the red color and, and because that wasn't really explained here. Uh, well, I, I think the commercials are, if this is all her projecting, I feel like that is her projecting trauma in some ways because Strucker and Stark are not just, you know, just random names. They're two people that, you know, have, you know, committed trauma on her in some way. I mean, Stark almost killed her and her entire family um and then Strucker experimented on her i mean they they um volunteered but still <laughs> yeah yeah it's uh it, we're gonna find out i don't know if it's gonna be next episode but it might be in the next few episodes so uh yeah i thought the Strucker mentions the fact that they were not mentioned here rather i thought was very interesting so, um, do you think this stuff with the blip is completely unrelated? And the only reason they mentioned the blip was kind of to explain where Monica was during this entire thing. There's no correlation there. You guys think between what's going on here and the blip happening? Um, I'm not I sure. Don't think, I don't think the blip has much to do with the show. I just think it was a good way for them to start back up with her character. Plus, it gave them the ability to cast a character who is five years younger than the character would have been mm-hmm. by this point in her life. So maybe that was done partially to be like, hey, you know, this actress doesn't look like she's as old as the character would be because she's not. She's been gone for five years. Yeah. Because, I mean, how old was she in Captain Marvel? Like 10, 12, somewhere around know. there? Probably 10. I mean, yeah, I don't know. It was, it was pretty young. She was pretty eight, and, eight to 10. Did they establish which year in the 90s the movie took place in? I don't think they said. I thought it was 95 I mean, for some reason. If if that's the case, then, you know, she'd be like 37 by now. Then. Okay. So ca- being able to cast a younger actress will just ensure that the character's around for a long time. So mm-hmm. I almost feel like that, that was just their easy way of being like, yeah, we're just going to cast a slightly younger character and make it seem like she was gone with the blip. But it also adds a little trauma to her character that, you know, just she's be- now she's been through something kind of crazy. So perhaps that'll inform her decision making going forward. Who knows? Yeah. Um, and they also referenced too, I forgot to bring this up when we were talking about it, but like when Monica got sucked into the universe, she was kind of going along with it. And they mentioned how, while they were watching the show, Darcy and Jimmy, that is, they noticed how she was acting weird. I mean, she was within, like, she was acting like a character, but you can sense that something was off as with all the other characters. And when like her memory was jogged or whatever about the Ultron thing, that's when shit kind of fell apart. Um, I don't know. I mean, do you think that there could be some sort of, uh, I don't know, if it's a mind control thing? Or do you think that might be why more people aren't going in to go save these people? Because they might be warped into thinking they're part of the show if they do? Uh, I, I was just going to say, I think the radius of the spell is affecting everybody around it. And I think that's why the cops didn't know. They didn't know what Westview was. Yeah. Um, and I think that's also why once Monica got inside of it, she forgot why she was there. Mm-hmm. What about you, Chris? Well, they did re- mention something. Didn't Jimmy Woo say that they had a missing persons case, but that when he contacted all the people related to him, they'd never heard of him? Yeah. It almost seems like Wanda has erased these people from their past lives, at least maybe temporarily. And that's why nobody's coming to get them, because nobody knows that they're there to have to go get do you think it's Wanda? Or do you think it might be if 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 it's you know Ag if if it's Agnes and it's actually Agatha Harkness and there's the witch you know aspect of it? Do you think that she could have had something to do with it and helped out Wanda with that portion of it? Maybe, but I get the uh, 
See, I'm not sure. The whole Agatha Agnes thing really throws me for a loop because there's so many things that signal she could be helping Wanda, and then there's so many things that signal that she's part of the delusion too and maybe doesn't know what's going on. But the fact that she's a magic user means she has a little more resistance to it. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. But one thing I want to bring up before we forget, the song at the end of the episode, Jimi Hendrix. Yeah, Voodoo Child, right? So... That has to be a reference to Brother Voodoo, right? Maybe. There could Brother be some Voodoo significance there. Brother Wanda had some dealings in the comics. Oh, Maybe. okay. Um, I mean, I mean, they did. They do mention um, Brother Voodoo's brother in the first Doctor Strange, if I remember right. Well, okay, so the only Doctor Strange at this point, because the second was not out. Yeah. Uh, but I'm not sure. I I think that was just a reference to, um. The time period? Uh, Wanda going bad in some ways. Okay. I think that was why... I, I think that's why that song was used. It, it's my guess. I'm not sure. The reason I brought that up is because there's there's a story in the comics where... Like, I don't know what happens to Wanda, but somehow she turns evil. And they, they refer to it as being inverted. And then she ends up inverting a bunch of other people, heroes and villains. So they end up on the opposite side. And Brother Voodoo's the one who actually, like, fixes the problem. So I'm almost wondering if Doctor Strange and or Brother Voodoo will at some point be brought in. Just the fact that they used Voodoo Child, like, it it felt like it was too perfectly placed to not be a reference to something specific. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, I know that they're moving forward by decade, but, like, Voodoo Child was recorded in 1972, so they would have already been in the 70s decade for the last episode. So I know that has nothing to do with the next episode, but I could be reaching for straws here. But, I mean, Brother Voodoo even took over for Doctor Strange as the Sorcerer Supreme for a little while in the comics. Like, he's one of those characters that not a lot of people outside of comics know about, but mm-hmm. he does have some importance. So I'm kind of, I kind of hope they bring him in at this point, because honestly, he's one of those characters that, they could do a lot with because he's he's not that well established in the comics in comparison to these other guys. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I immediately made that connection to a character. I I just thought I just thought it was because the show shifted them- thematically that that's why they used the song and just the music cue in itself and why it happened. I thought it was just like you know signaling the shift into the next chapter of the show. That was just my theory on it. That's what I was it thinking could, too. But then, yeah, like you said, Chris, the show I, makes I you grasp at straws. No, <laughs> you know, yeah. Well, you know, well, I, I feel like everyone's overanalyzing a lot of things that may not end up meaning anything. But with Marvel, you never know. Like the smallest Easter yeah, egg could come sure. back and be referenced. So honestly, we are completely justified to be overanalyzing everything because you are not wrong. If we're, we're we're Jimmy Woo and Darcy here writing all these questions on the board and seeing if they come back to bite us or if they actually means something. I don't know. I guess we'll find out in due time. And I like what you said earlier, Chris, about how you don't really know with like Agnes's character, whether she's helping Wanda or if she's, if she's a part of the delusion. Cause she acted like she was afraid of what would happen if Herb told vision, what was actually going on. So it makes me think, I don't know. There, there's a lot of mixed signals, but I feel like they're doing that on purpose to keep us guessing. And that's what I think one thing about the show that they're doing really, really well, because it makes you want to keep tuning in to find out exactly what's going to happen more so than most Marvel properties, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. I just, it to me seems like Agnes at this point is playing along. That's, that's how I've, I've been reading it for the last two episodes. Yeah. Um, I don't think she wanted Herb to tell Vision what was going on because I, again, I think she's helping Wanda, mm-hmm. and I don't. I'm not sure why she's doing that. I'm not even sure if Wanda knows she's helping her. I'm. I'm not sure. Like, what is the dynamic there? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, they could, they could take this in any number of directions because Marvel obviously has the creative freedom to do these characters differently than the comics in the first place. But it it just seems like there, there's just more to her character that I, I, I'm so curious to know. And they've done such a good job, like 
sprinkling in little things that tell you that like she's different from the rest of the people in the town somehow. Yeah. No, definitely. There's a lot of things, if you go back and rewatch the first three episodes from what I've seen people say, the things that she says I don't think are a coincidence. Really, nothing that Marvel does for the most part is a coincidence, but I think her character specifically, the stuff that she has said and she's hinted at, could be some sort of like subliminal message that they're going to come back and, and mean something at some point. I can't tell you exactly off the top of my head what she said, but I remember listening to what she said and thought it was a little weird. So, like what she said to the messenger, well, not the messenger, the fucking postman, you know, he was like, oh, don't shoot the messenger or whatever. And she was kind of like looking in his bag a little bit. Like if you go back and really analyze it, like you said, it could be complete overanalyzation or it can end up meaning something. So it makes you actually pay attention to more details, not knowing if something's going to come back to mean something or not. So again, it makes me that much more invested in the show. And I think, uh, I think they've done a great job so far, especially with people that may not have been sold initially of getting them like, okay, this is where we're going with it. And I don't really keep up with the commercials either. I don't keep up with the ads and the teasers and the trailers and shit. Um, but I guess I didn't, I didn't watch the trailer for this episode before it dropped, but I guess they kind of gave away a little bit before we ended up finding a lot here. Um, and do you think you guys, do you guys think they did that on purpose to kind of tell people, Hey, this is where the story moves forward. And it's not just going to be all sitcoms, maybe for those that weren't sold about the first three episodes. Well, it definitely seems like they held back with with critics. They gave them the first three, and now we know why they didn't give them more than that because yep. there was such an exposition dump in this episode to tell us so much, but still left us with so many questions. I just, I'm just very curious to see what the format is moving forward because I don't think we're going to get just full episodes of the sitcom stuff anymore now. I do think we're going to start seeing a little more of S.W.O.R.D. here and there, but, you know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it'll be one or two without S.W.O.R.D. involved at all, and then we'll come back to them. But either way, I'm just really happy that, uh, like, I like the Darcy character just because I, I think Kat Dennings is funny. So yeah. I'm glad they brought her back, but the chemistry that she had with Agent Wu was great. Like, he's he's already one of my favorite characters in this just because Randall Park is just so good. Randall, I love he's him. just so like he can make the most mundane line funny just yeah. because of his delivery. Like uh, somebody's missing you at Quantico. No, sir. T- softball season's over. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's, he's just so great. And Randall Park is one of those actors that he's been working steadily for a long time, but he only has recently started to break out because of that uh, fresh off the boat show and that Kim Jong-un movie that Seth Rogen made. Oh, the interview. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So seeing him start to get like these big projects and being used more, it just makes me so happy because he's such a funny guy. Like, there's this old web series he made years ago. I think I talked about this on when we did the Ant-Man thing, but uh, mm-hmm. he did this show with a comedy sketch group called Ikea Heights. And it's supposed to be <laughs> like a soap opera that takes place in an Ikea. And they legitimately would go to Ikea's and shoot without the crews, like without the store knowing or giving permission. <laughs> so oh there, are scenes, there are scenes in the show where these people will be having a scene and then an Ikea employee will come up to them and say something like real mm-hmm. and then they'll, they'll stay in character. And there's this amazing park where Randall park he has like a map to some treasure for some reason. Mm-hmm. And he's talking to one of the girls in the show and an Ikea employee comes up and is like, uh, I'm sorry, sir, you can't film here. You guys are going to have to leave. And he just looks him dead in the eye, doesn't change expression at all and goes, but what about the treasure? <laughs> the look on the employee's face is so it's just so funny i i encourage anybody to go find this show if they can on youtube or daily motion or wherever the hell it's at now it's called ikea heights and it's mm-hmm. it's so ridiculous and funny i think even better than the softball line was when he first met monica when they were looking at where westview was supposed to be and she was like oh what's what about you obviously implying like you know, why do you know what the town is like me? And they don't. And then instead he just goes into a backstory. He's like, well, everyone else had like X posters on their wall. And I had, I had like Elliot. So I, I don't remember the reference he said exactly. Um, Elliot from the untouchables. Oh, okay. I didn't know who that was. I didn't get, I mean, I, I thought it was funny. I didn't get the reference. Person. 
Elianessis was a real guy who really did like work for the government to take down bootleggers and shit back in the prohibition. <laughs> but people mostly know him because of the Kevin Costner and Sean Connery movie. Gotcha. Who was the first person that he mentioned? That he had that, I, that he was like, know. Oh, everyone else has a poster on their wall of like Michael Jordan. Michael, Michael Jordan. Jordan, Michael Jordan, yeah, thanks, Phil. That's that's who he was talking about. Yeah, I, mean, no, I, I thought that was great. I legitimately did have a Michael Jordan poster on my wall, so he's not <laughs> wrong. <laughs> I probably had like both three, actually. I mean, you know, I'm from Illinois, dude. You got to represent. <laughs> exactly. Chicago references, actually, because Elliot Ness is, uh, wasn't he from Chicago? I don't know if he was from Chicago, but I know Capone was, so he was yeah, here well, a lot. It took place in, in Chicago. Yeah, so yeah, he was here a lot. Actually, fun fun fact there's a, a little pizzeria in the town that i live in that at one point it's like you have to go underground to get to it it's actually under an apartment building and it was originally like one of al capone's little hideouts outside of the city <laughs> no interesting cool. yeah you can eat pizza there now yeah it's just a little pizza and bar place it's it's not good i don't recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> well all right well I mean, if, if I was like, that sounds get, cool. You should go there. Yeah, I was, was going like, to say. Don't I get drunk and don't care about the flavor of the pizza, fine. But it is, it's bar pizza. At, like, it is the definition of tavern pizza. It's, <laughs> you know, it's not made to be good. It's made to put some food in your stomach so the alcohol gets soaked up. True. That makes sense. Well, I was going to say, now I have somewhere to look forward to going when I go to All Out next year in Chicago, if they go back there. But I guess yeah, I, well, I'll, I'll pass and I'll just go uh, somewhere else instead. I'm sure there's cooler Capone hangouts. <laughs> that place that we ate at last year with Eric was actually pretty good. I don't remember what it was. I don't remember what it was either. I have all the Uber's receipts, so I'm sure I can go back and find it exactly what it was called. But that place was pretty good, though. Who recommended that place? That wasn't Eric, right? Was it someone else that you guys were with? It was one of the guys that was like who lived around there. Oh, okay. Uh, this is like there was two or three other Bleacher Report people there besides Eric and Brandon. Yeah. I think one of them had suggested it. I, I like. I know that's a place that has a bunch of locations around Chicago. I just can't remember. Yeah, and I don't remember the name off the top of my head. I do remember that like three or four of us got chicken parm sandwiches, which was pretty funny. And yeah, I, I, you know, it, it was a, it was kind of like a, it was a chain restaurant type yeah. place. They had a lot of different stuff. Yeah, they had a bunch of different stuff. Well, it was good, but uh, we go from WandaVision to talking about pizza in Chicago. You can't go wrong with any of this stuff, and I'm sure uh, we'll talk more about this type of stuff next week with Episode 5 Review, which is, uh, it's heating up. Shit's getting more exciting. And I was already looking forward to the show, but I find myself more excited at the end of each episode than I was the week prior. So um, it's given us something to uh, look forward to every Friday right now, which is great. So much going on at the moment. This is a nice distraction from everything else going on in the world currently, which is... uh, just fantastic. But before we uh, close it out here, any final thoughts uh, from you, Phil, before we uh, end this episode? Uh, man, I, I thought so many things watching this episode and after last episode, because I rewatched Age of Ultron last weekend. Oh, nice. And I couldn't help but thinking at the beginning, when they when they show Vision, like, um, unanimated body very briefly, and he, it didn't have the, the Mind Stone in it anymore. Yep. I was like, man, I, this just always goes back to my theory that Ultron is not dead. And it could because Vision never wanted to kill Ultron. Um, and so I, I've always wondered when when Wanda shattered the Mind Stone briefly, like, did he escape the Mind Stone? Mm-hmm. That's just always been my weird headcanon that he's like somewhere out in the Marvel Universe now. We don't know it. As like a as a Jarvis type of character or still as Vision, you saying? No, Ultron, like he's somewhere... Oh, Ultron, I'm sorry, they were talking about Vision, my bad. Gotcha. Let me ask you something. Do we actually see Vision destroy him? Don't they just kind of like... No, it's just a flash of light. That's why I always thought he just trapped him in a Mind Stone. Well, I know we've talked about this before, I think, Chris. I know in um, the first Spider-Man movie, in Homecoming, they show his head, and a lot of people have picked up on this. And it's been years, and they never really followed up on this. When it was that quick Easter egg when uh, Happy Hogan is going through all the Avengers shit in the plane and you see the Ultron head, or maybe it was Peter, I don't remember, but they find the Ultron head and the red light is still glowing. So, which indicates, and it wouldn't be glowing unless there was some sort of life to it. And that was another thing I was going to ask you guys. I, I forgot to ask you last week, but they mentioned Ultron 
As opposed to Monica just saying, hey, didn't your brother die? Like, we haven't heard Ultron's name since that movie six years ago. I mean, do you think there might be a reason why they referenced him and that he could still return at some point, maybe within the context of the show? Well, I mean, Ultron was obviously a very important character in her growth. So, I mean, it it could be as simple as just that being a reference to something outside of Westview that she picked up on, like, hey, how do you know that? I don't know. I mean, if if Evan Peters shows up again as that character, I'll I'll be skeptical as to whether he's alive too. Cuz <laughs> at this point it almost feels like they're not establishing that she can actually bring people back. She's just like somehow doing it temporarily, but we yeah. never know. Yeah. There's so many people that think this is going to lead to the introduction of the mutants somehow. Uh, I wouldn't. I don't I, think so. I think it's more tied into the multiverse stuff with Doctor Strange and that that could potentially lead into the mutants. Yeah, but, I agree. Yeah, I, I do feel like... Oh, and also, there was a clip getting shared around earlier this morning of an interview with Benedict mm-hmm. where apparently he mentioned, like, oh, I recently had the scene to shoot an action scene with a a Marvel character that I've, I've never gotten to share the screen with before. And it was like really invigorating and I'd love to do it again or something. And a lot of people seem to think he was talking about Paul Bettany because those two characters were never really in a scene together in Endgame. Hmm. Yeah. I don't, I, I'm not going to say that I think that this means that we won't see vision again in some form because mm-hmm. he's an Android. You can always rebuild him. Um, but I think that the vision we're seeing in the show is dead for sure. Um, the, the, now, as far as mentioning Ultron, like, I think, I think that was on purpose. And I would say was like mentioned showing like the blip and mentioning all these other things that have happened in the MCU. I think that just goes to show like this show is very different than any other Marvel show we've gotten so far, even Mm -hmm. than agent of shield. Like it's, it's actually in the Marvel universe. Like they can actually, like have continuity in it and it's not like even like the netflix shows where it's like you get like some vague reference to the rest of the universe but (laughs) we don't actually see anything yeah you get the same actors and stuff like that yeah i thought it was interesting that they almost went out of their way to not have darcy mention anything about thor or jane and agent Wu not mention it like neither of those characters made any reference to their previous appearances in Marvel. And I almost was just waiting for it. Like yeah. Marvel is Marvel loves to throw in their own little references to stuff. And I was sort of just like when they were going to send the guy in through the sewer, I half expected Jimmy would be like, Hey, I know a guy who can get real tiny and just like run in there. <laughs> like I just wanted something, but they never brought it. <laughs> yeah. What? Well, but see, I wonder Man, because it's so close to, like, right after the blip. Like, how much do we know that everybody else knows about the Avengers? Does everybody else know the Avengers are still alive? Yeah, see, we don't even know what Darcy... Like, how does Darcy know that Vision's dead? Is she, like, always working with the government now? Like, what's her clearance level? Yeah. I I wouldn't think so, just because she was like, oh, they brought us all together for one. I mean, they made it sound like they just plucked her off the street just because of what she's good at with the uh, astrophysics. What what was her specialty again? I forgot. It was astrophysics, right? Isn't that what she said? That's what I thought. Okay, astrophysics. It sounded like they just kind of picked her up from wherever she was previously for the last decade since we last saw her, and that she hasn't been working with the government, although I could be wrong. Yeah, I mean it's it's tough to say. There's there's obviously a file on her somewhere because she's been involved with some crazy stuff and the fact that Coulson like mentions, "Oh, we got Jane Foster out of here and something like he clearly knows who Thor's associates are and was looking out for them back during the original Avengers." So Darcy is probably in some way like a government consultant and just an unofficial capacity, but um, yeah, like she knew Vision was dead and even knew who Vision was, which is weird. So I think she's probably just more informed than the average one of these people on the show. Well, wasn't yeah. um, 
well, specifically, I well, she said not only was she was he dead, but that he was dead, dead. It wasn't just blipped away. Like they made that very clear that she knew that he didn't blip away and that he's actually dead and gone for good. Um, but to your point about her knowing exactly who he is, didn't they reference his death in the beginning of Far From Home? Though, when they showed that clip at at Peter's school of all the Avengers, the montage, like the the friggin' like yeah. whatever, and he was a part of it. And now, obviously, they put in people that. No, wait, they didn't put in people that blood. They put in the Avengers that actually died, and he was a part of it. So, wouldn't that indicate that they all know that who he is and who, you know, the, the fact that he's gone for good? Maybe. That's the only way that I could see that she would know, because Vision didn't even die on American soil. He died in Wakanda. Yeah, good point. Right. Yeah. So. I mean, it's possible that after everything happened, you know, Iron Man or Cap gave some interview to the media and being like, oh, this is what happened and this is where we are now. Well, I mean, they're dead too now, aren't they? Well, <laughs> so, they are now, but after the, after the initial blip. Well, oh, yeah, okay, Cap okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, after the initial blip, they could have gone around and given some information. I mean, you got to tell people why half the world is gone, so. <laughs> yeah. You know, Vision could have just been one of the people that they were like, yeah, you know, these people bravely gave their lives trying to stop it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the other thing that I thought, going back to rewatching Age of Ultron, um, of course we get that great scene of Hawkeye um, giving Wanda the pep talk to go out and stand with the rest of the Avengers. And in that moment, like, she's seemingly having a panic attack. Mm-hmm. Um I just look back at that and I just think, you know, if everybody else is t- tending to their own families or their own trauma from being back from the blip and Wanda's left her own devices, like she was kind of brought in to the Avengers in that way. And she was never she's not like the rest of them because she's not from America, for one thing, and she doesn't have as close relationships with everyone else. So when left to her own devices maybe she would do something like that. And I, I did think about that while watching this episode. Yeah, I could see that coming back. That's a great note about the panic attack thing because it definitely, you could definitely see it within the how she how she's portrayed and how she acts in this show. So that's actually a great point. I think that's some great character consistency. Yeah, I, I mean, I think at the end of the day, like this show is going to be mostly about her dealing with her mental health. Definitely, Like, I think that's the whole premise of the show. Yeah. No, actually, that's a great point. I didn't really think about that, but that actually would be a really... I mean, they're not going to just outright say that, I think, but yeah, no, definitely. I think, um, like we've talked about before, kind of her dealing with the grief that she's gone through and how how much shit she's had to endure over the course of the MCU from when we first saw her up until now. So, um, yeah, no, definitely. Actually, I didn't really think about it that that far, but that's a great point. Um, Any other additional thoughts, Chris, before we wind down here? Um, I mean, now we know that the guy in the beekeeper suit wasn't AIM, he was S.W.O.R.D., but yeah. I'm still wondering if AIM is going to have anything to do with anything, or if that was just people making connections that ended up not being true. No, well, yeah, won't know for sure until the end of the episode, or until the end of the season, so, uh, there, there's a good point, that, that you know, there, there's a good chance that it could still happen, there's still five episodes left, yeah, five episodes, wait, five, six, seven, eight, yeah, five, so... We got some time. There's a good chance that a lot of these theories, although they might, you know, kind of die down a little bit because we didn't get any reveals or any... I mean, we got a lot of reveals in this episode, but nothing in terms of, like, a Mephisto... Or who did you say, Chris? You said uh, Brother Voodoo? or Brother what was? Voodoo. Yeah, yeah. So we, we didn't find out exactly everything in this episode, but they gave you enough to keep wanting to tune in and find out that there probably is more than what meets the eye. Um, so yeah, you never know. I guess it, it, come episode nine and the season's over and there's no aim reference at all. Then I guess we could safely say that, uh, that it didn't happen, but until then we'll just keep on doing what Jimmy Woo is doing and writing questions down on the whiteboard <laughs> and uh, questioning what's real, what matters, what doesn't. And, uh, just enjoy the show for what it is. So I enjoy this every week, guys. This was awesome. Uh, Phil, people can find you on the Twitter machine at PhilDL616. Chris, you are at, at BR underscore doctor. Uh, this has been awesome, guys. This is going up on Monday. But till then, though, enjoy the Royal Rumble. I'll catch you guys next Friday. Yep, take it easy.